Welcome, um, everybody, back to Siegel Talks here at the Mark Me Siegel Theater Center, the Graduate Center CUNY, the City University of New York um, in Manhattan, and um, uh, where um, we are still, you know, experiencing uh, a lockdown, uh, the shutdown of life, the numbers that we are reading are not encouraging. Over 100,000 people in the U.S. have died. The next country is 36,000. Britain actually also is very high, but it's still, why is that the US? Why is so much in New York and New York State? What's going wrong? And uh, uh, something seems to be uh, um, not working, that the structures of uh, society, the fabric of it has been exposed, what's working, what's not working. And, um, and um, we are experiencing it really with our bodies uh, in our daily lives um, that have been so, so disturbed by, um, by that COVID-19 um, 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 crisis. Uh, we having talks all around the world, globally, from Egypt, Lebanon, Hong Kong, uh, Taiwan, uh, Hungary, Poland, um, everywhere to listen in. Uh, of course, also our New York and American artists. We had uh, just in Bogart with that yesterday who show, shared with us her experience um, of this, um, this uh, unusual time, the time where the world hit a break and uh, we are all of a sudden stopping in the middle of the tracks and we have to really rethink what we are doing, the experience and we also have the time, but it's existential for many, many, many places in the world. Some are better off, some not. It seems to be strongly connected to leadership, political leadership, and that government often does a good job. We hear from artists who are very grateful of our participatory democracy and it works and in other places it's not working. So we have to find ways that it's best uh, organized for societies and in those countries uh, where, where things are working out, theater and the arts also seem to have an important place, a significant place. They are part, uh, part of uh, uh, solutions and, um, and uh, now we are turning uh, to a place that we should pay more attention to anyway. It's not so much on the news for COVID and it's the great uh, country and continent of Australia. And we have with us Patricia Cornelius. She's a, a legend in her time in Australia, a great, uh, great uh, worker, warrior, and fighter in, the, in theater, a playwright uh, whose work always has focus on class and social structures and, uh, uh, and also focused on the experience of minorities uh, in her country, which of course has a very special history. She came to our Penwell Voices Festival also, and um, now, we have her with us. So, um, Patricia, thank you for uh, sharing. And I always say that, where are you and what time is it? Hi, Frank. Um, it's very lovely to be speaking with you, though. It is 2 a.m. in Melbourne in Australia. And it's just actually quite late for me. And um, 2 a.m. Uh, in the middle yeah, of the night. That's incredible. In the middle of the night. And it's freezing. And um, so it's all right. I've got a heater. It's okay. I'm managing. That, it's but, winter. It's winter yeah. in Australia. Yeah. Yeah, well, just about. And um, it's just everybody has to forgive me if I should sort of doze off. But I, I probably won't. I'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope not. And if, if yeah. so, you can all blame that on me. So listen, um, you are in Melbourne, right? Um, so what's going on in Melbourne? Um, we, we've been, um, the country is very divided by, by states and certain states in the country have um, uh, really escaped COVID really fairly miraculously and have had such low numbers or no, no none. And, um, uh, but in Victoria it, it, and New South Wales, there have been quite a number of people with COVID and it, there's still some uh, sense of being very anxious about um, uh, uh, distancing and isolation and um, just uh, really... It's sort of difficult to talk to you in, in, in New York and in America when we are, we're so aware here of how it's hit America and New York in particular and uh, that we've heard that news. And in a sense, we feel like we're sitting pretty comfortably um, and there's been very good results in um, very few deaths and very few numbers. So What are the numbers more control. or less? What are the numbers? Just over a hundred people. Is that really that. true? A hundred, but that's as much as in one building, uh, one old age home in uh, New York or New Jersey. Yeah. You, really? You have a hundred cases in Australia? 
Yeah, just over, I think. Yeah. See, partly we've come later, and I don't know about that, but partly we there's a sort of sense that there's more to come, and the second or the third wave is talked about. But uh, mostly people are feeling like it's all over, I think. And um, but the impact of, of the last few months, especially on the arts, has been devastating. Well, not, not just the arts. The, it, the impact on uh, working class people is just e enormous and the loss of jobs is just devastating. But I suppose the worst thing about for the arts is that um, we haven't really been considered in the, the package. There has been relief packages and, and quite good ones. Um, offered to people who have lost employment. But um, of course, uh, artists don't fit the criteria. And so we fall through the cracks. And I think it's going to have a huge impact on for years and years, because there will be so many younger artists who, who will not manage this time and perhaps seek to do our, other things, or, and more than likely will seek to do other things. So that yet again, you know, it's that funny thing, isn't it? You know, you, you have this uh, remarkable and peculiar time, but actually all it does is reveal where it's been flawed so terribly. And um, the arts here has been neglected for a really long time and um, no investment in it and no support of it. Um, and so and other areas like the arts, that have also been poorly uh, looked after. It, it, they just fall apart under these um, really exceptional circumstances. Hmm. So did you have a lockdown then? Were you uh, confined yeah, yeah. or could you go? So tell us a little bit, when did it start? How long was it? Um, it was in March uh, that we were, well, it's funny, This um, these, cards behind me it was because I was involved in, I brought Shit, a, a play that I wrote to Penn. And, yes, shit. Mm -hmm. um, and that play um, has had a huge life and uh, gone all over the place and that's just been made into a film and we were making a film on the, on the smell of an oily rag as it had not been properly funded. We just went for it. But we went for it and the day after we, were sh we, we finished shooting was the call for um, um, isolation. So we got it shot um, and all the footage is there for us to be working. The editor is working on it now. And we, um, the writer and me and the directors have been uh, working on Zoom with her. So um, there, there's just, um, that was a wonderful experience for us. So it was wonderful a kind of luck really. But so the, 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 um, it's since the early March that we've been locked down and, and now things are just being loosened up and kids are going, in this state, kids are going back to school this week and, um, uh, or sorry, early next week. And so uh, things are just starting to, um, yeah, happen slowly. But there's still theatres are closed, um, transport, there is min not a number of, you know, a certain number of people allowed on them. Um, and but for a, a lot, for a good month, people were keeping very away from each other in the street, they really distancing. But I've noticed that that's really becoming, I think it feels too unreal for us. It hasn't hit in the way that has hit your country and others. And, um, and so you, you get this sense of it's not, not, not kind of real all sorts of bullshit conspiracy theories that go berserk about it as if it's not real. Mm. So um, even so, you only had 100 confirmed infection cases. The country not, went not, for three no, months. <clears throat> 100 deaths. Death. What? Yeah, there's, there's a lot more people with coronavirus. Yeah, that, but 100 that, deaths. Uh, yeah. 100 100, okay, I misunderstood. Yeah, 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 100 people yeah. died, which is yeah. extremely low, of course. Um, but yeah. um, so, but still, the country went for three months in the lockdown, where people had to stay at home, and you could just go to a supermarket and. Um, and no, you could. You could. There were sort of special times for the elderly and disabled, mm -hmm. and then 
um, but you you were only meant to go for you for um, vital things, not not for shopping. All the other shops were closed, but anything essential um, you could keep buying. And how was the mood of the Australians in that lockdown? How did they take it? With, as far as we think, you know, perhaps. Uh, Mm. Uh, uh, wrong way of looking at that country as a country that we want to love the outdoor sports, uh, being on the move, uh, enjoying um, um, uh, the landscape uh, and the distances. How, how did Australia take this? Uh, uh, I think it, I think most Australians were very compliant. I mean, we we see the um, footage of demonstrations in America where people are in a fury about not being able to go to work on, um, and the whole distancing stuff. And we, we didn't have, we had very little um, resistance to, uh, we were quite compliant in, in keeping distance. I think it frightened us. And, um, and people, especially uh, the Aboriginal community, Indigenous community in Australia were very, very wary of how this would devastate communities and are very mindful of, and most of Australians were quite mindful of that. So all travel interstate um, stopped. Um, and I think they've only just opened up certain um, parts at, at certain borders are still closed. The Queensland border is closed to New South Wales, for example, and um, to Alice, uh, you to um, Northern Territory. And, the Northern Territory is very wise to just keep their borders closed, people, people out, travel and tourism out until this is way over because of the vulnerability of Indigenous communities there. Um, but generally, we have been really compliant, really um, sort of towing the line in terms of um, our, our um, uh, the leader of our state, uh, Andrews, has been very, very stringent with us in particular this state and kept uh, things closed and kept distancing um, much longer than other states. And people have actually liked him for it. They feel like he's looking after us before this very um, remarkable now push to get, get back the economy, the economy over um, health. Uh, that that debate that's happening all over the world, and where you, you um, are not willing to look after people in the way that you were when when it was um, in the early days, I think it's stinging a bit in terms of uh, the economy now. Mm -hmm. Well, that is interesting to hear. Italy also, you know, as far as we know, very much the Italians listened to it in France. People were very hard. Uh, they did not uh, uh, listen to the government or had a free independent spirit. They actually had to print out forms and carry it with you, <clears throat> show to the belief people who yeah. own bikes were fined two, three hundred dollars or euros. <clears throat> in America, of course, it's schizophrenic. Our uh, president says to people to inject disinfectant. Um, he pushes to open uh, churches, even so, we have the highest numbers here of uh, infection death mm -hmm. cases of taking into account that people might die even in religious services. Uh, in Texas, the store owners uh, hired um, militia, people with semi-automatic guns here, and then made up army closes to uh, fight the state who forced them supposedly to close things. Uh, meanwhile, in South Africa, they said, we close all our liquor stores because we don't want domestic violence to go up. In South Africa, they even closed uh, tobacco stores with the problems of a black market. And, uh, and now, um, now um, we have, yeah, I think almost one out of four workers in America filed for unemployment. There are studies that, you know, once unemployment is more than 15, 16, 17%, it's dangerous moments for, um, for uh, societies and, um, and so we are in a very unstable moment. We don't even perhaps see it when compared to an Australian uh, situation. Um, it is a stunning, a really stunning, stunning, the, dif the difference. It's, of course, an island, a big island. There are many reasons. You don't have five million people in one city using the same subway. Um, but still, there are structures that are um, out there, forms um, that are not, uh, not working. Do you feel Australia as often uh, as kind of 
the world passes by or what happens in the world is that you in feeling of of a remoteness from uh, the, what's happening on the globe or i think i feel um i i think that you we used to we talk about a really a, a thing that's been all my all my life is the, the, the cultural cringe and that there's a kind of embarrassment about being australian that australia is a backwater that australia is not part of the the real uh, and vibrant world and um it it's uh, you, especially in uh, in relationship to the arts like you we import so much and we we think everybody else's work, work is so much better and uh as much as i think it's incredibly important to see other other works and to um be involved in that dialogue uh, uh you to not look after your own stories and to be able to tell the truth about your own country is uh is is shocking um but but and i think that lots of people kind of have make sort of jokes about, about australian and uh, about yobbos and um you know, that we're a bit backward but most backward and we are we're kind of a backwater in terms of uh, we still have Manus Island and Anaru, where we have uh, people in, in migrating here and who came here by boats and they've been there for years and years and we've imprisoned them. And the, there's nothing else to say about that except they're being imprisoned and it's absolutely miserable. So we, and then we've got a history with our Indigenous people that is so shameful. And, and we don't recognise um, really basic things uh, with treaty and, um, and compensation. And even just recently, uh, a, a huge and important um, part of the land in Western Australia, Rio Tinto, has just you know, uh, um, ex uh, dynamited it and because of their, their industry, because of the mining and uh, the total disregard of the importance of that place to the Indigenous people, yet again, it's not, nothing new to it. So, uh, yeah, I think sometimes we are this backwater, and or, 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 or we often are. But at the same time, you know, I've been to America and New York, and I've been to London, and the kind of notion that artistically, for for me, that there's the mecca is elsewhere. Is a kind of nonsense. You, know, you you have to, as an artist, deal with who you are and what country you've got, and um, it, it's not better over there. It's not uh, more sophisticated over there necessarily, and um, the whole world is suffering from a kind of um, a cultural sameness that is quite disturbing and um, and ridiculous. So, yeah, I don't know whether that answered your question or, or, mm -hmm. or not. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in a way that Australia might be lucky that, uh, you know, it is not, uh, that was uh, the implication that perhaps, you know, this is, hasn't come, might never come. But <clears throat> it also, as you said, might come in waves. Where do the arts fit in? Wh what is your place? How do you feel your place is in, in Melbourne, in the community? How does it? Well, you know, I, I, I'm sitting so pretty because of America, because I was a recipient to a, a really huge prize last year from America, for, which is the Wyndham Campbell Prize, and um, which get, sort of gave me more money than I've ever earned in my whole life, ever. Mm -hmm. And um, and so you you there there's been great disappointment. So. There immediately I had a play cancelled from a company in Melbourne that, and, a, um, and that with a, no commitment for it to be rescheduled. And that's happened to a lot of our, our playwrights. And um, it's devastating. So there, because there are other companies, I don't know what's happening in New York but, or elsewhere, but you know, the, the, the commitment to as soon as, the, as um, theatres are back on, that that program will be rescheduled, and um, uh, that that is not happening in many uh, theatres here. I think the trouble with the independent sector is so vibrant and so important in this country 
that we have a, a very few theatre, major theatres, and the independent sector has been under attack for so long now. And um, the, the small range, uh, small and medium range theatres are basically disappeared and, or are unfunded and um, a struggle. So they, they, I think many of them will go under and um, not make it with this because they already were under duress. So um, the, the lack of opportunities for younger playwrights in particular and actors, um, it, it, it will be hard on us. And there's just not the same care about um, uh, uh, the arts in Australia. And this uh, kind of obsession with sport and just uh, um, yeah, that, that whatever theatre is brought in, big commercial numbers here is what, what most people would see. Hmm. And, um, and where did your, um, your work fit in? You got that big award and congratulations again. And we hope you know that for also having you in New York for our festival, uh, help to, to, to get you out there. Why did you get the award? What did they say? Why is your work wasn't awarded? Um, I, can't, I can't quite, like, they actually wrote something, but I can't quite remember the wording of it. But it's sort of um, an award for, for a bod your body of work. But mm -hmm. um, but sort of, I think it's sort of important that they that they give it to people who are still working still rather working. than a kind mm -hmm. of retrospective of your congratulations you've done good and probably won't do anything more from now. On. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean it's such a surprise. It comes to you out of the blue. I had no idea. I had I didn't. I even thought it was a scam when they rang me. I thought mm. oh this and um uh so it's uh, yeah a, a, a couple of do you know them the Wyndham and Campbell they yes, were yes, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and I did, I hadn't sorry mm. I didn't know who they were but they yeah so they left enough money for this legacy to be for eight different artists um to be writers of different in genres to be awarded each year um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, somebody nominated me. Mm -hmm. In in your work, um, uh, why why do you do theater, and what do you see it does in Australia? What is wh wh what place do you occupy in that landscape? Uh, I think I've always I've always I have always been interested in class and. Uh, it, there's an incredible denial here of class and um, it, it's just you know, a ridiculous lie. And also you know, the, the representation of class, mostly from Britain, has often been quite sentimentalised and, or, and uh, you know, n not... not um, well, it still gets quite sentimentalised. So I sort of feel... But that there's a kind of reason to be really pissed off with the world when you're um, uh, in a position in, in the, as a working class person, and especially as a, a in the underclass, whether you're totally disenfranchised. That you the pretense that this is an equal and fair society is is must be maddening and is maddening. And I kind of feel I quite like my plays to be maddening on that level. I quite like to be, uh, find a way to talk uh, about uh, the, those sort of injustices without the, either the either sentimentality, which just kills any art form, or without it being didactic, which also kills um, art form. So to find the vibrancy in voice, I'm mostly interested in the language of how people speak and uh, I, I just want to be able to bother as much as possible and bother mm. the conceptions and perceptions that people have. So there's plenty to be bothered about here, plenty, well, plenty to be bothered about in the world generally. I think the coronavirus is sort of 
incredibly bothersome. I kind of, when it first struck, I thought, how the fuck am I going to write ever again? How, how can I, what, what can you, you do with this? It felt um, so distracting and so overwhelming to be able to kind of uh, capture uh, anything like this. It seems so surreal and unreal. Um, and I thought the, the good thing was is that playwrights were, could only go for the jugular now. Well, how, how can you write daffy, silly kind of you know, relationship plays or, or, or sweet nothing plays? And I've got no tolerance for them. I, I, I know people enjoy them. I, it's fine to enjoy them, but they're just a, kind of a waste of time. And, um, and it doesn't mean I don't use humour and I don't use a, any kind of tenderness. I do, but as a technique to be able to, uh, a techniques to be able to say something a bit more gritty and more interesting. But you know, and I thought this is what will happen that our art form will get tougher. But now I know that actually that, that's not gonna happen, that there's already talk of kind of things people wanting to laugh and people wanting, needing a softer approach, needing to hear stories that are heartwarming, um, needing to hear crap. And I never believed that in all my life as a playwright. I've never believed it for a minute that you, you can't put that on because it's too hard hitting. You can't do that. It's too uh, sad. You can't. Because actually, I think people have an amazing appetite for going deep, for hearing in, in the flesh, which is what theatre is the best at or the most um, you know, powerful in. And they, they, there's such an appetite for it. And um, it's, the other is a lie. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this is uh, this is all very true. And your play also is shit what you showed in New York, you know, those young girls where you didn't know what really happened to them. And I think you went on trams or uh, through through the parts of Melbourne where you picked these things up and there was, was the truthful and uh, serious, but also playful, but felt you uh, you mirrored something and touched and uh, on something that resonated. What stories do you think we need to hear? Well, if you say in this Corona time, or uh, after, what do you feel is of is of, of what theatre should be all about? I, th I think I've noticed that there are a lot of play plays and um, in the making or or de being developed about um, climate change and the, those things. And that, I think that once you once you sort of it, as much as that is in, uh, totally important and huge. I think, and you're talking about race or even class when you're talking those big, uh, with a, you know, big concepts or big ideas, is to be able to find the right kind of story and the, the right characters to, that are that bring bring it into manageable bits. You you can't to be able to tackle uh, stuff in too great a chunk. Um, it, it kind of defeats it. But I, I think I think that capitalism yet still is the most wretched, wretched um, system, and uh, and we, we it, people get tired or get kind of really like oh, is so old fashioned, Patricia, or you know that you, you can't talk that kind of talk um, when actually it's in our face, and the coronavirus is a. You, we have not got a health system that kind of looks after people. Um, that that we that we do not have. Uh, we have a, a the lack of um, investment in science. That that there that we're behind the eight ball with with stuff like this. There that there are there are not um, already kind of mechanisms in place. You that you, we're really what's capitalism. It's a kind of making money 
at the expense of so many people. And it's very simple. But I kind of feel like I think that theatre should be on the absolutely raging and on the attack. I feel like it's this has made us go, um, come on, let let's let's not let's not get seduced by um, warm and fuzzy. Let's not get seduced by simple. Um, you, caught up in um, the the politics of of self to the point where um, we we kind of lose the main thrust of who's attacking us and who's hurting us dreadfully. Mm. How, yeah, I, I can't. Uh, each person, you know, you have to kind of just find the the vivacity in work and that that that's the biggest trick i reckon is like to kind of have the either the vivacity or vehemence you know so there's nothing more startling when you go into a, a see a play that has a life force and you think there are so many works that just don't they are dead in the water and they, they, you sit there politely and or you snooze or you kind of never talk about it for a moment after you leave that theatre. And it, it's just a waste when there's such vehement uh, concerns to be addressed. Yeah. I'm doing it. So do I sound a little bit? Um, lecturing? Not at all. No, I think this is very serious and important no. uh, to hear. And I think the rage and I think, and Bogart yesterday also talked, she said how angry she was when no. starting out as a theater. In a way also you're saying, this is good, you know, I, it gives me uh, something. Um, there's an old uh, story of, uh, I think it was um, a Goethe who, German great writer, wanted to visit Schiller's working room and he was never allowed to get in one day Schiller wasn't at home and Goethe lied to his wife and said, no, 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 he told me I could come in. And he went to his desk, his standing desk. At that time, they would dictate to their writers or they would stand up, they wouldn't sit down. Uh -huh. And it was a smell he couldn't, uh, he couldn't uh, bear and Goethe left the room almost uh, throwing up. And then his wife said, this is terrible, what's in there? And his wife said, oh, he, he didn't tell you, no? Because nobody was allowed to go in. And he said, no, and he had rotten apples. In, uh, in his writing, <laughs> writing desk. And uh, so he thought about it that, that somehow, you know, whether we fight uh, communism, we fight that neoliberal capitalism, we fight uh, uh, um, religious uh, intolerance, you know, there it is something, um, Reich's great fight against, you know, the Aristotelian theater, something to rage us, it gives us working, but it also has to be something uh, real in that sense. And I think. Um, there is so much to be really upset about because it would work better if the forms we find to deal with it are right. And the forms don't work. We have to find new ways of uh, dealing with the world we all live in. And I think theater, in a way that's always also looking for forms, has uh, some answers, you know, has some, uh, some, some uh, things that can offer in, uh, in the sense of uh, the, the minds of a community and uh, of the individual. So if you, that rage, what you have, or that, that, that uh, uh, seeing realities and not, you know, getting the sugar candies uh, uh, plays and uh, that are not good for our health, you know, but uh, so how do you see reality, how it is, how do you put it into work? What, uh, what are your, what have you found that works in your writing, in your thinking and for theater? How do you translate it into your work? Mm. I, I, I think most, most of the time I'm trying to uh, be, uh, to use as much trickery as I can without it, without it being fussy or busy or, 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 a, you know, or a ruse. I'm not kind of trying to trick somebody in that way where you sometimes go, oh, you know, you get a, a kind of twist in the story that you weren't expecting, but it doesn't delight you. It, you feel a bit cheated that some elements have been left out. But more that 
it has to be an act of seduction, Peter. I know that people got, have have to uh, be, as instead of the warm and fuzzy and t telling inane stories, I, it, it still has to delight. And I suppose more and more I'm interested in how language can delight. And I, I like the vernacular. I, I feel that street talk is so gorgeous and, and also quite, you know, I poeticise it, if you like, a bit, because it, it also can be so dreadful. <laughs> So, so shocking and so banal at, 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 in the opposite way. But so, but it, there's something in the humour of it and the power of it where, um, so I, I, now more and more language is the thing, the, the, a vivaciousness in, in, in how people are talking. I, it's interesting now, isn't that, because that, you people are doing all sorts of things to rediscover how we can get to work again when you, we can't have people or people might be afraid to go to the theatre for a long time. But, oh, God, I, I feel so mournful at the idea of how, um, you know, I hear lots of things online and people are doing all sorts of experiments where actually there's no kind of real audience anymore. And th your theatre in particular is uh, the vibration that you get just to, when you're watching your own work and you can learn on that opening night or a preview, you can learn from everybody in that theatre so minutely but so clearly what, what it sounds like or how, how it's working. And there's a kind of that vibration from just the personal experience of sitting there, let alone the just you, what you're watching and, and seeing in the flesh and how that, how that um, um, affects you and, and moves you uh, differently from film, from screen. And um, I, I just... I, yeah, just to be able to get people back into the theatres, and um, and be be unafraid. Of, uh, it's gonna it's gonna take something, some time, I think, mm -hmm. and that will damage us even more. But to go back to the kind of the kind of techniques of, I think there's just a lot of seduction uh, of being able to use. Um, use any technique you can in how, how you get to have characters even speak. Sometimes I think, oh, this is just <laughs> so hard. Well, how do they start opening their mouths in a, this weird artificial world we create with lights and sets and all sorts of effects? How, how do you break through so that you, the artifice doesn't kind of kill you and um, or just offend you? Um, so some, somehow I think you have to find the, the, the story and the characters to tell that story that are, are really have something great to say and... There, there's lots to say. There's lots to say. Mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of a lot of the arts not interested in in what they have to say. That's the hard part. You want to write tough and powerful theatre. You are not necessarily going to be open. You're accepted with open arms. Not at all. Not at all. It's surprising how. Uh, frightened it can make a lot of theatre companies feel rather than delighted or excited that they'd think you, you just they're, they're nervous about who they offend especially uh, you know, if you have a subscription audience and the people that you keep um, uh, 
you know, faithful to you so that you start to presume that they want only a certain type of theatre. Mm. That's always been. Yeah. In this time now, um, what you have to say, do you feel something is changing inside you? Is that you're observing something? So let's just say I'm gonna, something is switching how I will write and uh, how I uh, will, will construct my plays. Is it having an effect on you or is it reinforcing what you feel? I knew that and now I'm focusing on that in a different way. Is, that, is there a moment of a change for you? I say initially I did feel a kind of, I just felt distracted from being able to concentrate on it. And sort of the, the, what was happening outside and in the world just seemed overwhelming. And so I felt daunted by it. So I thought, but actually now I'm kind of, we, we, we writers are used to self-isolation. We kind of, you know, it's, it's not, it's not kind of that painful, really. So now I feel I can, my concentration is back, and um, and uh, and it, I can, I can find my way through this stuff without it um, daunting me any longer. But I definitely think it has to. I ha you have to consider um, the kind of the form. That, that it might take, but oh, I don't, I'm not sure about that, Frank. I, I feel like I've all, you always you always have to kind of find the right form for a particular story, but the distraction is less now for me. Mm. And I feel can I can work uh, more clearly again. So for two or three months, you couldn't really write. And now you are starting, you are sitting down and work. Yeah, yeah. And well, even more, it's a, I, I'm the kind of um, most undisciplined. I, you, I, I have a garden, which is sort of, thank God, because you, you kind of, um, I, I, write a, I write a really good little bit of text and I go out into the garden and celebrate. <laughs> for mm -hmm. half an hour because I, I feel like oh I've done it I've got something and um but and even though that seems frivolous lots of ways it's like walking or you know sometimes ideas of have an a, you an a, a, an accidental kind or they need an accidental kind of um diversion where you where you, you become clearer about something so I, I um, don't always just do most, not all my work is done at the desk, is what I'm saying. Mm. So, so how do your Corona days, how did they look like? When did you get up and when did you write and, uh, and uh, do you bleed, read and listen or music or watch films? What did you do? How does your day today organized? At my days, mm. um, I've actually, I've got my son who's um, sort of, a, Probably he might think he's stuck with me. <laughs> so he's been away and he's come back to Australia and um, he, was, he was living with me or staying with me and then the coronavirus uh, came in and um, so he sort of was a bit stuck with me and which was actually fine, good, good stuck, but maybe not so good stuck for him. But um, so I, I'm not... not I'm not in total isolation, um, but I, uh, so I share my house with him, but uh, I, I, um, I just, I get up and I would just, now I, I've just been just sort of pushing for kind of weird, trying to get a scene a day down because I've got to play. But I, so I just aim for a scene a day and, and I don't always achieve that. But I, um, I've got, I've got bits of scenes, if you know what I mean. It's the mm -hmm. sort of seed, seeding, and um, then, yeah, I don't know. And then I'm also working on this film, the, the shit mm -hmm. film. So, um, I've got two things going at once. Yeah. Mm. 
And the play, did you start it writing in that time or you already had the idea before? Um, yeah, it's material that belongs to, um, I've written a novel that, that uh, it, 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 it's about as well. And, um, but, and it's, also, it's a commission that I've had for a long time that I haven't acted on. So I had no excuse whatsoever because of mm -hmm. the coronavirus, but to um, get it together. But it's uh, to look at, I, I was brought up by a um, POW father who was uh, a POW in uh, on the Changi Railway, and um, and I was wanted to look at the legacy of his um, experience on the fa on his family, um, and it's not as a prisoner not, of war, yeah, yeah, and not, and not not so much as a kind of autobiographical thing. But there, there are autobiographical bits to it because they're very convenient and most vibrant and, and because I can use them to, to embellish and, or to say something about war and about um, that, that kind of legacy from uh, the end of the Second World War leading up to Vietnam. And that's because this partly because it's a commission for Melbourne Theatre Company. Melbourne Theatre Company has traditionally a quite a, an ageing um, subscription base. And a, a lot of people who are probably my age or older who know of that period and have a kind of uh, interest in it and their children uh, and... Um, others kind of the ricochet, it might ricochet from. But anyway, I'm not sure that that's a valid reason, but it sort of interests me still. So yeah, I'm writing about a, a post-war. Mm. Mm. About yeah. Yeah. confinement also in a different context, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, you also worked for the Melbourne Workers Theatre, which, if I understand right from the tradition, also really worked with workers, people from the city. Um, what can we learn from Australia? It is such a vibrant country. Sydney and Melbourne are fantastic cities, you know, and of course, there's the obsession with sport, but also there's movie uh, theatre that comes out, the circus uh, 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 tradition that has been also reinvented by... Uh, by, by um, Circus Oz. Circus Arts, yes, and uh, the festivals, the literary festivals, the, uh, the uh, theatre festivals. So um, um, what can we learn, you know, from Australia where perhaps, you know, uh, you, as you said, we are a bit perhaps also on our own. We have our own stories, you know, and that kind of uh, uh, engagement with life and, and your stories. What did you learn? What do you think, what feels that works in Australian um, 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 arts or, or theatre that could for everybody, we are all looking now, what is really working, what could be working, what, what, what do you detect, what do you think could be of use for us, for all of us? From, from about, Australian, about, yeah, what you found yeah. out in the engagement, where you, you know you, with the arts. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, it, I think it's bro bro more broader than just Australian. There's bit, like questions of class, obviously, and race. But at the same time, we don't tell those stories here. And mm -hmm. those stories are, yeah, when I worked with Melbourne Workers Theatre, there was great successes with plays with that company and, um, a, and a great vibrancy in the community with those plays. But at the same time, the, there was a kind of, it, it, they become um, quite isolated too from the rest of the arts community who do not accept mm -hmm that as real theatre, uh, you know, the community-based theatre, there's an incredible snobbery about it, what, 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 real, what real is art or what a high art is. So uh, I think there's just a way of breaking through some of that. Uh, the, the, that journey for me, I mean, when I worked with Melbourne Workers Theatre, it was like a, uh, an apprenticeship that was offered that is not offered anymore by any companies because these companies don't exist anymore. They've been defunded. And that, that apprenticeship was offered to probably, I could name 
at least five playwrights that came out of that company and who are still working and are still writing vibrantly. And um, uh, you, you just uh, are on the floor with a, with a whole lot of actors in workplaces where the if you if you if you're not hitting the right note or if you're if you're full of bullshit you will be called and um, it is terrifying and exhilarating at the same time and um, and you have to you learn all sorts of kind of techniques on the floor in interviewing workers in in finding out what the, or what their stories are. Um, you're kind of introduced to ways of 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 coming at work that you'd not you, you wouldn't be if you're just in isolation, and so it's that kind of collaboration that is missing now for most playwrights. That kind of um, engagement with others who are like-minded and your peers in a in a, a real community trying to tell stories and in, in a form or. Um, it, the particular stories that are going to really, really work beautifully, sing, um, and have what what you and you talked about, Anne Bogart's, you know, have a certain rage in them, maybe, and or vehemence at least. Um, but that 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 experience is sort of sadly missing for for most now. I kind of meet young playwrights and they're. You, the greatest hope is that maybe the mainstream theatre will pick up one of their works and um, and you kind of see them getting sort of almost treading water stuck in this with this sort of sense, sense that that's the mecca that that mainstream company is the mecca they're the important um, uh, voices cultural voices that representing this country most of the time not doing Australian stories, most of the time um, doing Australian stories that don't talk about Australia really. And so uh, you, you got to think, actually, it's not the trajectory that, you, um, that will feed you, not the trajectory that will kind of feed the work that you're creating that will um, develop you. Um, it, it's nonsense. And as much as it's lucrative, if you get to, you know, a play on, it can be you know, lucrative in terms of a royalty and fair enough, that's great. It, it's sort of, um, there is no kind of joy in the making of work that, that you experience with a company like Melbourne Workers Theatre where each play is considered and learned. You already know what the next play is because of the research that you've done for the last play You've been fed so many ideas, and so and you you pick up on what's what's um, vital for a, a whole community of people. Um, all, all those things are kind of uh, so important, and um, but we've lost them. And um, this is with the coronavirus going to lose more the the few that we've got left because. It's just not sustainable, and they're not getting any um, income whatsoever, or income assistance whatsoever. Mm. So it will be quite a devastating effect, you predict, yeah. for yeah, Australian theatre. You know where you say that is looking for truth and uh, and also wants to delight and uh, <clears throat> and chant, but uh, um, but um, people may you say might not want to see it or opportunities to be trained to connect to them are missing. Do you feel Australia found a way to connect to the indigenous uh, culture in a better way? I mean, in America, it's also, I think it's a disastrous way. And I think the um, Spider Women's Theatre, great theatre company in New York, they said, we would love to have our own theatre. We can't even get nobody. We don't even have our own theatres nowhere in the US, right. you know, where we can tell our stories. You know, so much has been taken from us. How come we don't even have a little tiny 80 seat theatre? Mm. No one supports us. How can that be in the richest country of the world? Also, it's stunning as yeah. how little it's represented in museums. Uh, very, very few museums have collections, significant collections. Often they are, were done outside. How is it in Australia? And uh, 
uh, is there, did you find ways to um, to to collaborate to include and um, yeah uh, there's also there's really there are um, each state or most states have an indigenous theater and um, Melbourne Melbourne's indigenous theater is Ilbidjuri theater and oh, they they're not uh, they struggle to keep funding but they are funded and um, and vibrant. Uh, you know, they, I think that the, the question of race is a, for a writer is so important as a, and as a white writer because there's lots of discourse here about who has the right to, um, to, to represent uh, characters from, that have no, that, that have no um, that are not your, from your ethnicity. And, I mean, it's a bit like Lionel Shriver when she came and... and there was that kind of um, event that in New Zealand where there's a walkout of um, um, women of colour who were furious with her because she was basically saying, you know, as a, a writer, she, she has the right to write about any anyone and anywhere. And partly I sort of go, oh, that's that. There's a truth in that 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 you can't if you just keep writing for your white community in a white world, then you get a, a, a white theatre. And how am I going to, to, am I going to keep doing that unless I take the risk sometimes to, to write um, and, and the daring to write for um, in, an Indigenous voice? And that, that's the risk I, I think one has to take. And... Um, and then you you cop it you cop it you know bad if if, if um, that community is pissed off with what your voice is then you cop it but you, otherwise you you stuffed really like you you stuck but um, did you say that you don't does America have a national um, uh, museum for its indigenous Yes, I mean, this is Smithsonian, you know, also the one in New York, they are yeah, museums, but still right. in the major collections, or if you use the numbers, also of smaller museums, it's, you know, of course, it's a lot of European art and American uh, yeah, uh, yeah. modern uh, postmodern art, you know, perhaps, and uh, that's good, but the, the balance is not right, and uh, something um, is... is um, Can I just tell okay. you that we, we don't have one? Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and it's huge contention here. Yeah. Why in the <laughs> hell... We wouldn't have one because it would be visited not just by Australians, but by people from all over the world. There's yeah. an appetite for it and there's a great interest yeah. in it, but we don't have one. And it's so kind of telling. You think, my God, this country is in such denial of its history and concern for its telling that you don't what? You don't invest in something that actually would probably make them money. Mm. You, it, it's it, it's bizarre, and, mm. and but it's about not wanting the truth to be told, and it, there's it, that's not new to Australia, but it's definitely big in Australia that we do not want certain things talk, talk, talked about, and um, and that's definitely in, in terms of our indigenous past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as you point out, these harsh, harsh policies against refugees, the immigrant com community, what we heard, how they were, you know, refused in, and the, the, these kind of camps were set up, uh, also the complications on gay marriage, uh, same-sex uh, marriage, which, you know, shouldn't be, should not really be. So there's, as, as you say, there's so much to, to fight against, to rage about. But your prediction is it will not bring Australians together to be more aware, to think about our communities and to strive for a better form. Your um, prediction is that this will be one, uh, one more uh, milestone on the way of less caring, of less uh, being involved or less uh, attempts to heal the society. Is that what you say? That, 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 that the fundamentals, that, that, like, your your country, where you've got such dreadful health um, mm -hmm. care for for generally across the board. If you and, can afford it, yeah. If you can afford yeah, it, most probably it's it. the best in the world. You know, right? Yeah. If you can afford it, but it's the you, worst. What, 
what the coronavirus reveals, isn't it? That who, who's going to be the most vulnerable is those without it and mm -hmm. who can't afford it. And um, in the, and it's the same here. Like it's sort of like who, who, if there's no investment, I, 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 it's, it's so poor, um, the investment in, um, in the arts that it's already that poor. Do you know what I mean? Before, mm, so the coronavirus yeah. is just exacerbating it. It's sort of already, there's not a, there's not a, a fight for it. There's no kind of uh, a general sense that people see it as something that's absolutely essential for their life is, mm. is on the arts. That, that is not the feeling here. Mm. Yeah, so, we all, yeah. It'll it, get it worse. Yeah, it's, it is, of course, the hope that being deprived from it, like on being a like Thomas Oberender talked about it, it's like when you go on a diet, at least you think about food, you know, and uh, that the hope is, you know, that people will long for this. And theater does represent life in its perhaps uh, most, uh, most beautiful form, at least that's what we think, you know, of celebrating mm -hmm. community ideas. Uh, the um, uh, history of freedom, the history of justice, that theater has made contributions on that long march uh, through history. And, um, and if we don't have it, that we even miss it and perhaps fight, fight more for it. Um, you already did say, you know, something about you very important. You say, be angry, be upset that what we look at this not working. It's terrible uh, to uh, tell the truth, even if it's uncomfortable, if it's not in the interest of your career, but uh, dude, but for coming a bit closer to the end of the talk to the people also who are listening, playwrights, directors here in the US, but also from other countries, um, what do you feel is uh, the most significant meaning, what we should focus on, what should we keep in mind in that time of confinement that goes on longer than you, for you in Australia where it opens up? Um, but uh, but what do you think we should take from this? What is uh, something we should not forget if it comes out of that Corona time and uh, what perhaps will help us to change things? Uh, was, it's hard not to um, harken back to the good old days, you know, like, and so I, I sort of feel like um, that there, there, will, there will always be those young people or, or, you know, or people who newly find theatre and how it can work and how wonderful it can be. And they find each other and they find a space and they do all sorts of, you know, sometimes ludicrous and sometimes extraordinary um, workshops together and, and um, develop works that are, um, that are highly experimental and sometimes <laughs> Um, you totally, uh, uh, you know, um, obtuse and, and difficult to penetrate and, and other times that have moments of great elucidation. Or I think is like to go back to those grassroots is to kind of find um, a reason to do it and to mm. do it poorly. Like you, you're going to be forced to anyway. You can't. There, there won't be the infrastructure for you. So you kind of make that, that those um, uh, nests, if you like, um, together and you kind of learn from each other and you have, you fight with each other and you, 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 um, you, you create work that you is maybe naive and young, but has a vitality and, I think that that people have to sort of come back to that rather than the, that that notion of thinking one day um, somebody's going to pick me, my work up. One day mm -hmm. one of those companies is going to, you know, it's just uh, killing and, mm -hmm. and keeps you um, thwarted the entire time. Yeah, no, this is yeah. um, this is important, and uh, you make an important contribution to theater and world theater, as you know. It's the about, price. Mm -hmm. about the raging, you sort of like, you know, you sort of think it's drama. That thing where you go to the theater and you go, you come out and you go, well, I'm not sure what dramatically 
was going on there, if anything at all. No, nothing was. It was sort of like, it's just you get told something and you watch it and nobody uses their bodies anymore. Like it's all just taught, told and talked and it's all very kind of polite and very um, articulate and mm -hmm. uh, or, or sort of. Um, and not not about anything much, and it, it sort of it, it sort of astounds me that that it's drama. We're doing we're making drama. It's fairly basic that you're looking for where you you you, you feel the rub. You you feel the discomfort. Um, I, I love it. I got you go to the oh, when the play uh, it it starts to make me. Um, feel quite threatened about what I've always believed in and what I felt secure about believing, even, even if I correct myself by interval. You know, like I, I still feel, oh, my God, that is compelling. You're sucking me into some way of thinking or, uh, uh, or absolutely bashing at my uh, set beliefs in a way that is totally... Uh, just fabulous. Um, we're, there's too little of that now. Too little where we feel um, the the vibrations of 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 something something else about the world that uh, need, that we, we need to change. That we that we uh, uh, we kind of get a sniff of. That's all you can get with you. Know? You're not going to come out going on. Oh, I'm going to. Uh, bring, bring about the revolution. You're going to come out and go be enthused about something in particular, hopefully. Mm. No, this is a this is a, this is a, a good reminder, you know, of what should be there and is not, and we feel the absence of that in the presence, and um, and uh, uh, and we all have to see it. It stands for much something much larger that it is missing and we have to find ways all of us uh, to to create those spaces as audiences as funders as governments they are significant they are vibrant and they uh, reflect and uh, also change because of their very existence and uh, and just observing and seeing how brains work to leave our own vr headsets it's all set as young and freud would teach us you know we are lost cases we are already incorrectable we cannot escape our own ego systems but the only way is perhaps in theater that for a short time you see a different reality and it's right mm -hmm. on stage it exists there but it's not it's fake it's open and you go back and for in that moment opens something opens a a, a space for reflection of accepting and uh, and uh, but as you say you know it has to be serious it has to be real it has to be truthful it has to be shocking and Bogart spoke of the terror of watching theater, you know, when even you don't understand what it is, but there's a bigger, larger force. So really, really, your work was so beautiful, um, also what you presented when you came to us. And I like the idea of you going through the streets of Melbourne or sitting in that tram you talked about and taking notes, how people talk, how young, also younger generations, you know, where you observed there was such a young, useful writing of those girls where you didn't know where they are going, what happened to them, where will they be, but you felt a slice of uh, of uh, something real, and it still it was imagined, but symbolically it was uh, representing, as you said, your stories and your 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 town, your your country. So I think uh, it's a lot to be learned from, and it's, it is a vibrant, at least from our side, also country. We you know the back to back theater, Ricardo Mundo, and many many others mm -hmm. of what you have there in the festivals. But yes, there is something is terribly missing. Uh, and also here in our country, and uh, we have to reconnect to that. It's of real importance to save us, the country, our lives, and also to make life worth and uh, what it's all about. So thank you, uh, Patricia. This was uh, truly uh, uh, great uh, to listen to you and hear your thoughts. You're also serious in um, uh, evaluation. And, uh, ah, thank you, Frank. It's lovely to talk oh. to you. Oh, really, and uh, how, how, how it is at the moment in your country. And there's a snapshot from around the world. And of course, we would speak to someone else. It's always a different reality, how it's experienced. But um, these are real moments. And you are great artists. And, um, and we you know, and can learn a lot from this. But I think your appeal to be, be aware of class and race and struggle 
do not uh, uh, go over it. Do not, you know, make sugary donut drinks and food. You know, <laughs> do something that's serious that also is good for you and for your for your brain and for your house for audiences and also something that represents um, and the world we all live in. Tomorrow we have uh, Hoi Fai Vu from Hong Kong, um, and. Um, all of a sudden there, everything turned very serious. I think this lockdown slightly is, is yeah. opening. First demonstrations are happening, but it's a very mm -hmm. serious situation. Huge arrests are here. Yeah, and how, how, how does theater fit in there? How do you do that? And mm -hmm. uh, uh, what is the role there? So I, I can't wait um, to, um, to hear from that next week. We will hear from France and, uh, and from Italy, hear from, uh, from New York and uh, other places. So. Um, is thank you really for staying up at now 3 p.m. past 3 a.m. in the night. That is uh, uh, like in your old student days, but maybe you are working in the night. And, uh, anyway, as uh, we often are nocturnal creatures, but really thank you. That was very important um, to hear from you. And uh, and I enjoyed your, 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 your listening and to you and yeah. the idea, tell something what's real with fury but also with delight, I think you said that, you know, there has to be some delightment in there. Some, this is an important lesson. And uh, I hope you will be back soon and I hope someone will produce your play in New York and okay. in America. It's shameful that we are also in a way so provincial, so close that, you know, the, we listen to world music, but we do not listen here really to world theater and the voices, the diverse voices and something is terribly wrong. And uh, we have to be part of changing that. So thank you again. Hope you all will listen in tomorrow. Thanks to Halron, DJ, and Thea, and uh, Travis, and our Siegel team, Sun Yang, and Andy. And uh, um, thank you for taking the time out of your life to listen to this. It's very important and significant uh, what Patricia told us. And, um, and, uh, and um, it is a remedy to really, uh, for a society to be aware of the structures we all live in and to see what's not working and to take it serious and be furious about it and but also find a way a form to tell these stories and to form it so thank you and uh, i hope you uh, will uh, have good dreams and uh, uh, and uh, and uh, good and a good night to you there bye bye thank you bye bye